I'm here today with Mark Smith. He's the CEO and Director for NIOCorp. How are you today, Mark? Very good, Tracy. Thanks for having us. Well, this is a very exciting story, so let's get right down to it and let's discuss your most recent drilling announcement that you just put out. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about Elk Creek and your recent uh, announcement? Well, the, the, the announcement was actually fairly simple in that we just announced that we had the second drill rig on site. Uh, but that's you know kind of a demonstration, so to speak, of, of how committed we are to moving this project forward at a very rapid pace. Uh, we are not simply putting a hole in so that we can you know, get a little resource information and then put another hole in next year. Uh, we are moving this project into development as fast as we can. So the drill rigs are both working. Uh, they're both actually exceeding the uh, feet per day that we had budgeted. So uh, things are going well. We did just send the first set of samples off early last week and probably either late this week or early next week we'll get our first analytical results back. Now we'll start seeing the information that can really provide uh, the, the resource news that we're hoping for. Well, a lot of people ask me, you know, what happened with Mark Smith? So if you could just take a couple, if you just could take a couple <laughs> steps backwards and explain why you selected. I mean, you have a very impressive biography, and I recommend that any of our uh, readers that do not know Mark Smith's background go to your website and read about what you've done and all the degrees, of course. I know you even have a doctorate of jurisprudence. And if you could just tell us why you selected out of all the critical materials niobium, I would love to, to understand that better. No, no problem. Um, first of all, you know, I left Molly Corp and I actually uh, was planning initially just to uh, invest some money, have some fun, and basically be retired. And uh, what, what uh, happened was that uh, the folks at NIOCorp contacted me and, and indicated an interest uh, in me coming on board. I said, I'm very familiar with your resource. Uh, Molly Corp had discovered that back in the late 60s. Uh, but I need to do a little due diligence first before I, I make any decisions one way or another. I started that due diligence process in January of 2013 and within about three or four months uh, I had actually decided that after my due diligence and I would checked all my boxes and I couldn't find any boxes that I couldn't check yes for, I uh, started to invest in the company and I contacted uh, the company in advance and said, I've done my due diligence, I'm going to start buying some of your stock on the market. And I did that. By September of last year, uh, unbeknownst to me, I had acquired enough stock in the company that I think I was the single largest shareholder. And it became evident at that time, I liked the project a lot, I was the single largest shareholder, I needed to be more engaged in the project than what I was. Uh, so uh, we made a, an arrangement. I became the CEO and a director of the company. Uh, have had just an absolute uh, ball the whole time. Uh, the people that work at NIOCorp are just as sound as can be, as honest as can be, uh, hardworking, and uh, they want the same things that I want. They want to take the uh, what's known today as the third richest niobium deposit in the world, called Elk Creek, Nebraska, the only primary niobium deposit known in the United States. And we want to convert this into the fourth producing niobium asset in the world. Okay, well, you're doing a great job of answering all my questions before I ask them, but I'm going to take you back another step. Why niobium? Because I don't think some of our audience may not be familiar with uh, what a critical material it is, uh, how we import 100% of all our niobium, and yeah. they may not have an appreciation on how uh, uh, niobium is needed for the electric car uh, uh, industry. Yeah, I'd, actually, I'll focus more on the car industry in general because I think that that's the much larger use today. But niobium, uh, the the worldwide market is between eighty and hundred thousand tons a year in the form of ferro niobium. Um, the, its largest use is actually in architectural uh, uh, buildings, uh, infrastructure like bridges and roads and whatnot because it uh, it makes the steel much stronger and it also makes the steel lighter. So it does a lot of things that are good for everybody. Uh, the second largest use of, of niobium is in the automobile industry where every you know, steel bodied car or steel chassis car out there in the entire world today 
has niobium in it, and that makes the car safer for you and I as drivers, but it also lowers the weight of that vehicle so that we use less gasoline or diesel or whatever fuel we're, we're burning uh, to get from point A to point B. So again, it's a win-win for everyone involved. Uh, the European Union, the United States have both deemed niobium to be uh, a critical and strategic mineral. And you're absolutely correct. The United States uh, currently imports 100% of the niobium that it uses. But both the EU and the United States have deemed niobium to be a critical and strategic metal. So, you know, this is something that needs to be addressed. And I think that we're in the best position of all of the potential niobium resources out there to be the fourth producing niobium asset in the world. Niobium is a relatively large market. A lot of people don't realize how big it is. It's a three to four billion dollar a year market, which is larger than uranium. Uh, so it's, it's one that's unknown because 85% of the niobium that's produced today comes from one mine uh, down in Brazil. It's a mine and a management team that I know very well at CBMM. And uh, we look forward to, to joining them as being one of uh, you know, the, the preferred producers in this area. So, Mark, because we have this great opportunity to speak to you, because of your in-depth background in helping evolve the rare earth industry in North America, can you just comment about the sector right now and, and really what you see for the overall market? Well, you know, I continue to watch that business very closely. Um, I still am a fairly significant shareholder in Molly Corp. And uh, in, indeed, have actually not sold one of my shares because I have a lot of confidence uh, in that company and the uh, rare earth business as a whole. Um, I do see stability starting to, 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 to be felt um, and it's maybe more of a gut feeling than anything else but we're, I think the, the whole industry is starting to feel a little stability. There's obviously the unknowns in terms of what is China going to do with their export quotas and their export taxes. Um, I still think that the market is going to be the market and we are, are seeing the demand side of that business really stabilize quite nicely. So I, I think stability is the name of the game, and obviously uh, with just a little bit of a price increase, uh, this industry turns around literally overnight. So let's, let's hope for that to be the case. Uh, let's hope that you know, Linus and Molly Corp can work through their, their production volume issues and, and get those volumes up higher and get their production costs down, because that will make them competitive. Uh, I, I still believe in diversity of supply. Uh, even in the niobium sector, we think diversity of supply is a, is a very big parameter that, that the customers think about all the time. And in the rare sector, it's no different. So having Linus and Molly Corp be successful, I think, is important to the long-term uh, stability of the rare earth industry. Well, thank you, Mark, so much for joining us today. My pleasure, Tracy. Thank you very much.